Greetings friends, I have a special, special treat for you tonight. And that is a drum. It's a djembe drum. And the reason I wanted to show it to you is because it's a beautiful thing and it makes a beautiful sound. But it is also very late and people are sleeping. So we will get into the noise that it makes another time. A beautiful, beautiful noise. Beautiful music that you can make with it. Very rhythmic and it will grab your attention. Anyway, we are using this tonight because we are gonna be talking about how to draw in 3D. And one of the important things, especially if you're working with a form, not a shape, but a form, which is a series of shapes put together, look three-dimensional, is that from our perspective, you can either see the top of it and not the bottom, or you can see the bottom of it and not the top. You can see the top, but not the top top. Or from the top, you can see the bottom, but not under the bottom. So we're gonna talk about that today. And what I've done is I've cut out the basic shape that we use, which is a circle but since we're gonna go at an angle, it's more of an oval, and we are gonna use this cutout oval to draw our djembe drum as if we were looking down on it, and we're gonna see the entire thing, including the bottom, but not underneath the bottom. We're gonna put it all together. So let's get into the creation station and check it out. All right, so here we are in the creation station tonight and we are gonna be drawing this 3D djembe drum form. And what I've done is I've cut out this oval shape so that we're gonna be looking at our djembe, not straight down. If we were just gonna draw it straight down, we'd probably just draw a circle and call it a night. So we're gonna take this oval and what we're gonna do is we're gonna trace it near the top of our page. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of carefully go around like this. And uh, this is gonna be our guide. And so once you practice this a bunch, you can pretty much draw it freehand. So the drum sticks up a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring it down some and anywhere where we can see the form, we wanna get a nice even line here we're gonna go ahead and kind of pick up where we left off. So, what we have here is a nice kind of top to the drum, and then it drops down a significant bit, and so we wanna kind of imagine that space, and where it drops down, there's a straight line. So. We're gonna kind of draw a straight line here. And then when we get below the middle, we're gonna go ahead and trace that again. So like I said, I'm teaching you a technique using this so that when you start um, drawing freehand on your own, you're just gonna get it. Now, then there's a rim, one, two, three, and it's metal, wood, metal. And then we get into the lower portion of the drum. Now, just a little rim. So each time we're just gonna draw a little line going down and follow it all the way around. We're gonna kind of tighten it up. We can fix that with our color. All right, so we're just gonna go down a little bit. All right. And just a small straight line coming down. All right, looks good. And we're gonna go down just a little bit more. And one more small straight line going down. All right, so we have the metal, wood, metal, the side, and then like the drum head part right there. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a slightly smaller form and it's gonna curve downward. So 
what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna start drawing the curve, okay, like that. And then we're gonna imagine where do we want our center to be? So the drum goes down and then it goes back out. So where we want the center to be, we're gonna try to imagine right about here, a circle. And I'm just gonna kind of freehand it in pencil. And I'm gonna try to take this line and go down to the middle of that circle. Just like that, okay? Now, at the bottom, we're gonna have a bigger circle. And so you have the middle base, then you have a bigger circle. It's not gonna be as big as this, all right? So we're gonna imagine about the same amount of space, and we're gonna make a bigger circle down at the bottom, all right? And we're gonna go ahead and go from the middle to the middle. All right, just like that. And then we're gonna take in the bottom because we cannot see underneath of it. So if we were looking underneath of it, we would see this and we would not see this. All right, so since we cannot see underneath of it, I'm gonna go ahead and erase the top portion of my circle, and in the center, I'm going to erase both circles. Now, like any work of art, we wanna always critique it. So, if I'm looking at mine right now, I think my base is a little bit wider. However, for the sake of this work of art, this is your work of art, you can make it any way you like, because really, the viewer's not gonna know. They're gonna see what they see here. Now, if they have a little bit of knowledge, they might be able to say something, but I have some little tricks. So, we're gonna put a rim around the bottom because it does have a rubber rim around the bottom, and plus that makes our base look a fair amount wider. All right, so as an artist, it's really what you create that is what somebody is going to see. All right, so now we're gonna go in and we're gonna add some details. So between the two metal rims, there are um, tuning pegs. So what you have is kind of a U shape and it's sort of like a clip. So we're gonna draw it thick and we're gonna go ahead and color it in and then what you have on there is a round tuning key so it looks sort of like that so i'm going to put maybe a part of one here i'm probably going to put a part of one over here and i'm going to put another one in between the two all right so there's my u-shape And then a tuning key. All right, just like that. And then this area is also a black metal rim. So I'm gonna go ahead and color that in. I want it to look a little bit shiny. So I'm coloring fairly lightly with my Sharpie. I'm not pressing down too hard. And I'm gonna color in between the tuning peg and all the way around. All right, so at this point, we want to kind of begin adding color, but one thing that I think is important is, especially if you're drawing something that's three-dimensional, is shadow and a horizon line. So the horizon line is really um, where your background ends, or if you're inside, it's where like a floor meets a wall. And uh, there can be multiple horizon lines. Let's say this was sitting on a curb and then behind the curb was like a street or a sidewalk or a hill or a mountain or whatever. And you can have multiple lines showing the space. So I'm just gonna say this is um, sitting on the floor 
and then there's a space for somebody to sit and then back here there's a wall so if there's a wall we're gonna put kind of a nice straight line through there and what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and just sort of outline that space so we know floor wall okay so that gives us a little sense of perspective that's a really good word to use now another thing that we have here is we have a cord around it that has a handle for somebody to hold the drum. All right, now the first thing we want to do is we want to make this look like this is not a design painted on the drum. Right now, it's going to look fairly flat. So, in order to do that, we're going to create a sense of shadow by drawing a lighter version of it and maybe a more spread out version of it underneath using a pencil. Now this shadow is going to be really great because when we color over it, you're going to be able to see that shadow. It's also going to tell us where the light is coming from. So that means there's some light coming from up above. Now, if there's light coming from up above, there's going to be shadow underneath the rim. Okay, and there's lots of different shading techniques that you can use, um, which we can go over in another video, but I'm using what's called a scumbling technique, which means that I'm just kind of moving my hand back and forth using firm pressure and then using lighter pressure to just sort of show where a shadow is being cast on our object. Now, this is where the light is hitting. So there's not really going to be shadow here. However, there's going to be light shadow along the side. And so I'm going to lightly kind of scumble back and forth over here. And if you have a soft pencil, there's a really cool technique you can do, which you've seen in our pastel videos. And that's to kind of smudge it a little bit. And you get some on your finger and it'll even smudge the shadow out a little bit further. Now, another thing we're going to do is this shape is wide and it gets narrow. So we're just going to kind of scumble a little shadow here. And the narrower it gets, the darker the shadow is going to get. So we're going to have really light shadow kind of around here and then darker here. And then I might go darker over the line where there's the rope. And I might even go darker around the edge. Okay, now, if we have light coming from here, then there's gonna be a little shadow along this side of our object, and just really lightly along the whole thing from up above, but more so on the left side, if that makes sense. So, with a softer pencil and a little bit of smudging, you're going to end up with something like that. So, we've got a lot of shadow on the object. Now comes the fun stuff. Shadow around the object. And it's going to be stronger on the left side, like I said, just because that's where we're showing that our light's coming from by doing the previous shadow. And so, what I'm going to do is just kind of real lightly go around like this and we have a shadow being cast underneath the object and I'm going to get real strong right around the object okay and then kind of go back and forth a little bit more all right and then you can just kind of like go crazy with the background as far as adding uh, all the shadow you want but this is this is pretty good and pretty dramatic for right now. So, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and uh, add a little bit of color into it. And then we're going to see sort of how it comes to life.
Alright, so we're back with color, and uh, I went to the local Publix and got these uh, four packs of crayons, because, you know, I got all these whippersnappers, and I got to keep them busy. Now, for, for this, if we're going to use pencil, colored pencil would be great for coloring with it. Crayon's going to be really good. Marker's going to be pretty good. Pastel is likely going to cover up the pencil. Um, so if you do wish to do shading and use pastel, you might just want to use the pastel for shading as well. Or maybe, uh, like you could shade over a Sharpie or something like that and then smudge it. So I want you to really be able to see the effect. So I'm not going to go full on with the pattern. We'll do that in another video. But I am just going to go ahead and uh, do, there's lots of triangles in this. So I'm just going to kind of use a triangle pattern. And uh, so I'm going to put like just kind of a series of repeating triangles here. And if you can see, you'll start to notice once I get my second color in there, um, the triangles um, have the shadow of the pencil underneath of them, and it's showing up really, really well. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that in, and then we're going to bring it to life with our second color. All right, so... Just kind of going back and forth with the triangles. Um, one thing you could do to give it more of a realistic look is you could have the triangle sort of move with the shape of the drum. I'm not going to get too crazy with that for this episode. We'll save that for another one. But I do want you to be able to sort of see the way the different lights are going to stand out. Um, when you're coloring over shading, you might want to start in the light section and work towards the darker section, um, so as not to smudge too much of the shadow, but if you wish to have more of a dramatic effect, you can certainly start in the dark section and drag it over. Again, as an artist, there's so many different possibilities of what you can be working with, and, um, so it's all about how you choose to bring it to life. There's no one right or wrong way. Um, there's just techniques that are going to give you different effects. And like I said, it's up for you to decide which one you prefer. So as you can see, you can see some lighter sections and darker sections. You can still see our pencil shadow and everything like that. Um, one other thing I like to do is I like to just um, color using kind of the side edge of the crayon um, to get a much lighter effect there. And I'm going to kind of go around the rim and I'm going to go over this section. So you can see, look, when I worked into the darker section last, the darker section really stands out and the lighter section stays light. Okay, so now I'm going to mix um, some yellow into there. Now it doesn't blend as much as the pastel. You'll definitely see that, but using the side of it gives you kind of a smoother effect than using the top, which is going to be more of a point like a pencil. Now with the crayon, you have a small amount of smudgeability, but not a whole lot because it's whack, but you can get some wonderful effect with paint. So, on that note, I'm going to go ahead and sign it. And we are all through for tonight. I hope you had a great time listening, learning about the djembe drum, drawing 3D shape, using our oval to create a form. And I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful night's rest.